Hello everyone, this is Urvashi Chahan. Welcome to Quotes Today by Live Law, where we bring you the latest developments from all courts across India. Let us start. Starting with an overview of the arguments made before the Constitution bench hearing the batch of petitions which challenged dilution of Article 370 of the Constitution. Today was the 11th day of the hearing before the bench of CGI Chandra Chud, Justice S.K. Kaul, Justice Sanjeev Khanna, Justice B.R. Gawai and Justice Surya Kant. The petitioners have completed their arguments. Before the proceedings, senior advocate Kapil Sibyl mentioned the suspension of lecturer Zafur Ahmad Bhatt by Jammu and Kashmir Education Department. He had appeared as a party in person on 24th August before the Supreme Court, expressing his deep concerns about the manner in which Article 370 was abrogated. The next day, he was suspended. Solicitor General Tushar Mehta said that there were other reasons for the suspension, but senior advocate Kapil Sibyl pointed out that the suspension order made a reference to his appearance in the case. Eventually, the Supreme Court asked Attorney General R. Venkata Ramani to look into the issue. Further, S.G. Tushar Mehta continued with his arguments for the union government. He started by referring to the list of states that became a part of the Dominion of India without signing a merger agreement and said that signing a merger agreement was not mandatory for states to be fully integrated with India. He further said that various welfare measures and amendments such as right to education, insertion of secularism and socialism to the preamble were never adopted in Jammu and Kashmir because Article 368 was applied but with a provision that any amendment made in the Indian constitution would not ipso facto apply to the state. Further, he contended that following the abrogation, there had been an influx of investments and tourists in the valley. The SG today also said that bifurcation of the state was a temporary measure and as the Home Minister in the House had said, ultimately JNK would become a state. Also, let me tell you, ex sadare Riyasat of Jammu and Kashmir, Karan Singh also virtually joined the Supreme Court proceedings today. As the hearing will continue tomorrow, stay tuned with us. Next is an update on the demolitions near Krishna Janmabhoomi. As you already know, the petitioners had approached the Supreme Court against the demolition drive by the railway authorities in Uttar Pradesh's Mathura that raised around 135 houses. Initially, the Supreme Court had stayed the drive, but last week it denied to extend the status quo order. Today, the court disposed of the plea. The three judge bench of Justices Anirudh Bose, Sanjay Kumar, and SVN Bhatti declined the request to grant interim protection by extending an earlier status quo order and permitted the residents sought to be evicted to approach the local court currently hearing a suit over the ownership of the disputed land. The affidavit submitted by the centre had also questioned petitioner Yaqub Shah's locus standi, accusing him of making shocking claims of victimization despite his property not being located on the railway land and not being affected by the eviction notices. It also argued that the petitioner tried to link this exercise with the Krishna Janbhumi Shahi Idga Mosque dispute in an effort to give demolitions a communal overtone. Senior advocate Prashanto Chandrasen told the court that a suit was pending before a civil judge over the ownership of the disputed land and appealed to the court to grant interim protection against further demolition. But the court denied to intervene further, saying that parallel proceedings could not be run by the Supreme Court. The next update is on the case against Molana Kaleem Siddiqui regarding religious conversions. Siddiqui, an Islamic scholar and president of the Jamia Imam Wali Ullah Trust, has been accused of running a mass religious conversion racket through several organizations and schools he funded. He was arrested by the anti-terrorist squad of Uttar Pradesh police in September 2021. The Uttar Pradesh government has approached the Supreme Court against the bail granted to him by Allahabad High Court this year. In May this year, the Apex Court had declined UP government's request to arrest him again, but had imposed strict conditions, including 
that the cleric had to remain in the national capital territory of Delhi and could only visit Uttar Pradesh to attend the trial underway. But today, a bench of Justices Aniruddh Bose, Sanjay Kumar and SVN Bhatti allowed one-time modification in the bail condition, thus allowing him to attend his brother's funeral at his native village in Muzaffarnagar district of UP. Also, the bench has strictly prohibited him from taking part in any political or social activity. He has also been restrained from delivering any speech there. The hearing of the state government's plea against the bail order has now been adjourned until 5th September. The Supreme Court has permitted former member of parliament and Rashtriya Janata Dal leader Prabhu Nath Singh, who was convicted in a double murder case, to appear virtually for his sentence hearing. In March 1995, Singh was contesting elections as a candidate of the Bihar People's Party and was accused of murdering two persons near a polling booth for not voting as per his suggestion. In 2008, a Patna court had acquitted him, citing lack of evidence, which was later upheld by the Patna High Court. Further, the brother of one of the victims challenged the acquittal in the Supreme Court. Earlier this month, the Supreme Court bench of Justice Sanjay Kishan Kaul, Justice Abhay S. Oak and Justice Vikram Nath convicted him in the case. In a strongly worded judgment, the Supreme Court had called the trial shabby and the investigation tainted, which showed the high-handedness of the accused, who was a powerful person, being a sitting MP of the ruling party. Pointing out several lapses in the trial, the Apex Court had also called the case an exceptionally painful episode of our criminal justice system. The sentence hearing is to take place on 1st September. Earlier, the Apex Court had directed him to be pronounced before the court. However, on an application by Singh, the order has been modified and he will now be present virtually. In a significant update, upholding the fundamental right of a person to choose a life partner, the Supreme Court has held that marriages performed in the offices of advocates are valid as per the Hindu Marriage Act. The case before the Supreme Court was based on the self-marriage system as per Section 7A, which has been inserted in the Hindu Marriage Act by a Tamil Nadu amendment. According to this section, two Hindus can marry without following rituals or without solemnization by a priest and by declaring marriage in the presence of their friends or relatives or other persons. The Supreme Court bench of Justices S. Ravindra Bhatt and Arvind Kumar overruled the Madras High Court judgment in S. Bala Krishnan Pandeyan versus Inspector of Police, where the High Court held that marriages performed by the advocates were not valid and that self-respect marriage could not be solemnized in secrecy. The Supreme Court noted that High Court's view was based on an assumption that every marriage requires a public solemnization or declaration. But the couples intending to marry may refrain from making a public declaration due to various reasons such as opposition from families or fear for their safety. In such cases, enforcing a public declaration could put lives at risk and potentially result in forced separation. The court further said that the advocates could solemnize marriage in their personal capacities but not in professional capacities. The Supreme Court has observed that a conviction of an accused for attempt to murder can be sustained even if the injuries sustained by the complainant were very simple in nature. Let me give you a brief background of the case here. The allegation was that the accused tried to assault a police constable on his head by a Gupti. However, the constable, while avoiding the blow on his head, got injury on his right shoulder. The accused was convicted for the offence under sections 307, that is, attempt to murder, and 332 of IPC, that oh. is, voluntarily causing hurt to public servant on duty. The accused was sentenced to rigorous imprisonment for five years and two years for the said offences, respectively. He then appealed against the verdict before the apex court, stating that even if the case of the prosecution was held to be proved against the accused in toto, the injuries suffered by the complainant were very simple in nature and would not attract offence of attempt 
to murder. But the Supreme Court bench of Justices Bela M. Trivedi and Dipankar Datta dismissed the appeal and held that merely because the injuries sustained by the complainant were very simple in nature, that would not absolve the accused from being convicted for the offence under Section 307. What was important was an intention coupled with the overt act. And in the present case, it was proved by clear evidence that accused had tried to assault the complainant with Gupti and two on his head. In the next update, the Karnataka High Court has quashed a criminal case registered against two youth accused of writing Hijab is our dignity with black paint on the walls of a government girls high school in Vijayanagara. A single judge bench of Justice M. Nag Prasanna quashed the proceedings initiated against them under Section 3 of the Karnataka Open Places Prevention of Disfigurement Act. As per the complaint filed by the headmaster, when he entered the school premises on the morning of 16th March last year, the walls were painted with the aforesaid graffiti. This was a day after the Karnataka High Court dismissed petitions filed by Muslim girl students challenging the action of a government PU college in denying their entry for wearing a hijab. But the court quashed the proceedings and said that as the provisions of the act were not made applicable to the area in question, further proceedings, if permitted to continue, would become an abuse of the process of law and result in miscarriage of justice. And lastly, an update on the recent incident of ragging at the Jadavpur University in West Bengal. As you know that a 17-year-old first-year student allegedly died by suicide by jumping from the second floor of the hostel building on 9th August. Allegedly, he was ragged and paraded naked in the hostel's corridor minutes before his death. In a plea challenging alleged administrative lapses and lack of security measures which led to his death due to ragging, the Calcutta High Court has observed that it is imperative to hear representatives of the student bodies. A division bench of Chief Justice T.S. Sivagnanam and Justice Hiranamai Bhattacharya directed for the students to be added as parties to the PIL and also observed that a university campus could not be turned into a political battlefield. The matter has now been listed on 5th September. Stay tuned with us. Thank you for joining us. If you wish to know more details about the cases I mentioned here, you can visit our website at www.livelaw.in. Stay ahead with quick legal updates only on Live Law. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe and support us. You can also support us by donating through the thanks button at the bottom of our videos or consider becoming a member at just 89 rupees per month.